Hey folks, it's Chad here with Airstream in Greensboro and behind me I have the all new 2024 Airstream Classic 33 foot front bed. It is the longest, the most expensive, the most luxurious Airstream that they currently make. We're going to jump into a walk, ar walk around right now of the inside, the outside, the top, the bottom, everything we can look at now. Hey folks, I interrupt your regular viewing of Chad's RV reviews for a shameless plug that when you work with me, you're not only gonna get the best customer experience, but you're also gonna get the lowest price for any Airstream on the market today. So when you're ready to move forward with your Airstream purchase, make sure you give me a call at Airstream in Greensboro. As we walk into uh, the 33 foot classic, as I mentioned, it is absolutely the longest travel trailer they currently make at three, 33 foot in length. You're going to have a few things on the Classic that's really cool. Uh, one of the things is going to be the doorbell. There's also this really nice kind of Class A style uh, grab handle that is lit. Hope you can see that uh, in the camera. We're also getting a little bit of rain, so we're going to jump to the inside. I've talked about the door a lot um, as I do my videos, and the reason I talk about it so much is um, it takes Airstream roughly eight hours to build this door because they're building it by hand. Uh, there is a new latch for 24, which I... <laughs> really like i'm hoping we'll be able to order these uh separate and uh and be able to upgrade our personal airstreams because it's much better than what we've we've had in the past quite like it same locky mechanism that will lock you out if you're not careful definitely get used to unlocking that every time you open and close the door uh, you're gonna have just a i think it's just impressive to see what airstream does in building the door You've got this cast aluminum hinge that's just super beefy. And then one of the things I like to point out is the welds in the door frames themselves. And what's cool about these and the reason I like to show them is, man, they're just so consistent. That doesn't matter which one I show you. You could look at every single video that I've made and they're going to look pretty much like that. Now, as you walk into the 33 foot, I'm going to shut the door behind me because it is starting to rain a little bit on me. We're going to have a fire extinguisher. We're also going to have this really nice touch panel. Now, this is going to let us turn a lot of things on and turn a lot of things off. So the first thing we could do in this top button here is going to let us basically press a button to say on board. It's going to turn some overhead lights on, things like that. The away mode is really cool. It's going to turn off every light that the smart system controls, except for the overhead lights. Those will turn off with after, uh, I think, 30 seconds or so. So it lets you get out the door without the lights turning off immediately. Now it is backlit, so you'll have a very light kind of lower glow in the blue and then a brighter blue glow around the button for uh, things that are on. Now we've got, let's see, that's exterior master light. That's cool. We have that. We're also gonna have our awning buttons right here. Now this is gonna be locked. To unlock the awning, you'd hit these two buttons together and then that's going to allow you to extend the awning, retract the awning, and then you can do your front tilt and your rear tilt. So that's all right there. You can also do that with the Air Connected app, um, the smart app, I should say, with the um, that connects to the, the Airstream itself. That will let you turn all these lights on and off as well. I love that that's there, and you're going to see these throughout the whole camper. And the thing I can tell you about these, the button is so satisfying to push. It feels like it was you know built well it feels expensive and i think that's what you're looking for at this price point we also have uh, these really nice gold um, colored hangers here for your jackets and so forth now this 33 foot is in this beautiful white very modern white cabinetry color and remember on the classic your door fronts are going to be a hardwood as opposed to laminated plywood and then your cabinet faces will also be a hardwood as opposed to laminated like you're going to see on your other uh, Airstream travel trailers. Now once you actually get inside of the cabinet that's going to be light Italian plywood very similar to what we see everywhere else for say like the Flying Cloud. But the actual cabinets themselves are really nice. It's a true hardwood. Uh, now these are painted. The door fronts and the little faces for the cabinets are one of the few things Airstream does not make. There's actually a company within Jackson Center that makes that for Airstream. So on the 33 foot, you could kind of call this a mid-living because you're going to have that beautiful 
huge bathroom there in the back. And then you're gonna have this really nice front bedroom area. This happens to be the queen bed. Now this one still has all of its goodies in the box. We don't usually take those out until we sell it. Um, let you be the person to unbox those. We'll have some accent lights. So I kind of call this a mid living because your living space really is here in the middle. We're gonna have this really nice dinette. The dinette is powered so you can raise and lower that yourself or just with a button. You don't have to actually physically do that, which I think is really nice for this price point. We're also gonna have the really nice recliner sofas. Now this is different than the 30. If you've been watching any videos on the 30 foot or read anything on the 30 foot classic, you'll know that the sofa that's in the front of the 30 foot classic is gonna basically convert into a bed. So that whole front section there is one piece. And when it folds up, it can lay down completely flat and make it into a bed. This is the older sofa that used to be in front of the 30. So it's gonna be two independent uh, recliners. And then you've got this um, little spot there to be able to rest your arms or a drink or something like that. Now this one's also gonna have the overhead projector. That's 12 volt, which is really cool. And it's gonna have a screen that comes down right here. Um, basically it comes down from behind the cabinet. There's a little build out here inside the cabinets that houses the screen, the projector screen that comes down. Now these are gonna have, all the cabinets are gonna have soft clothes. They're also gonna have this plunger style switch to turn them on and off. Just a, a nice touch. I like the magnetic version that we see on the Globetrotter, but um, that does work. Probably works really well and consistent. Coming around, we're gonna find the desk. There's a really nice padded chair that comes out. Um, you're also gonna find a little bit of storage down there in the bottom of that as well. Great spot for some blankets, things like that. We're also gonna have the Bose sound bar and some great storage in that area, as well as a nice tabletop to put things there. And then of course above we'll have the cabinets and then we're gonna have the kitchen area, which is basically a cross or opposed to the dinette area. Now let's start pulling some things apart and look in each area. We'll start with the kitchen area. So you come in and directly see the refrigerator. This is a 10 cubic foot refrigerator. It's a 12 volt refrigerator. It's gonna work very quickly. It will cool down in actually like 45 minutes or so. It will be uh, to temperature. So you have a nice large freezer above and a nice refrigerator below. And again, 12 cubic foot. So it's one of the larger uh, refrigerators that Airstream gives you. We're gonna have the storage above. Again, this is not gonna have a hanger. So you might want, or a thing to hold it up. So it might be something you wanna add. Now it is soft clothes. That's nice. So good storage, I mean, it goes back quite deep. So you can get a lot of things back there and then soft clothes, that's nice. We have a little bit of storage right there and then we're gonna have our, is that soft clothes too? It is soft clothes, huh, that's pretty cool. Now it will soft close until this point, but you're gonna actually have to press that in to get that to, get that to fully shut for traveling. And then we've got the pantry that will pull out, very similar to what you're gonna see on like the 25 foot uh, version of the Airstream and it also will lock in as well. And again, that's going to be the hardwood front. You got the hardwood fascia and then that's going to be the light Italian plywood with a white laminate over it. You're also going to have in the kitchen area this really nice, almost residential style um, stovetop here. It is propane. These will come off so you can clean them as well. And then there is a uh, exhaust fan that it exhausts to the outside. And there's also a really nice LED light to give you nice lighting. There's also lights above the kitchen area for your sink. And the button to turn those on and off is very conveniently located right here. Press that button, those lights come off, press that button and they come on. So right where you want those to be. Now the toggle beside is gonna be for the dinette. So that will raise that up and down. We're also gonna have this built-in wine holder as well as some storage for a few other you know, things. You know, of course, you gotta have your bottle opener stored somewhere, so you got spots for that. You got room for three bottles of wine to go there. Now, I'm not sure you would want to travel with three bottles of wine in here, uh, but I guess once you get to the campsite, you could slide those in. Um, I'm not even sure how they go in. These are offset a little bit. I guess it would come this way. Yeah, I guess if you put the, you could travel with it because the larger side of the bottle is gonna come in the side and then come down. 
So they'll be in like that. So it would stay. I still don't know if I would travel with bottles of wine right there. Now we're gonna have a really nice residential style faucet that comes out. You've got a undermounted stainless steel, very deep sink. Let me pull this other one off so you can fully see that. Really nice, large um, stainless steel undermounted sink. It's also gonna be dampened. So it's not gonna be loud when you're tapping stuff in there like most of your um, stainless steel sinks are. Let me get this back in place right there. Now, as far as storage in the kitchen, we're gonna have this area here. You've got a pullout right there, and then another one below, which is gonna have your silverware organizer in it that you get from Airstream. You also got a small trash can here uh, that is that does have a built-in spot right in there, right there. So it'll actually kind of hold it in place. And then there's some storage underneath right here. Now something else I didn't include in my first 33 foot video is the sea level monitor is actually hidden right here. Now, everything that's on this will actually show on the smart screen, which I'll show you here in a second. But if you wanted to just see what was going on, you would have the ability to look at it right here. There is no, there's no water pump button here like we're used to seeing on uh, the other levels of Airstream, that's going to be in the smart control system. But it's cool to see that. This is also going to be lined with a nice felt uh, material there. And then you can actually see how the sink is coated to dampen that. We're also going to have to pull out storage right there and another pull out above, which is kind of cool. And a really nice deep storage area for pots and pans right there. You've got this unique, uh, almost oven style microwave, just with how it opens, but it is a convection microwave. So this is, you have one option with the classic. Now you're just gonna get this microwave slash oven instead of, uh, you could option the convection or oven in the past. Now it's just this. This is what you get when you order a classic. Um, let's see, if I missed anything in the kitchen area, We've got this storage up here, but you also, with it being a 33 foot, you can use this, all of this storage above for your kitchen area if you want to. Now remember this right here is gonna be, there's a little shelf here all the way across. So you could set stuff up there. Um, and then on this part, it's completely open all the way to the back. There's also no hump in here as we're you see on some, some of the Airstreams, there's gonna be two pieces of board here because we've got a recessed light right there and right there. So this is gonna be more of a sandwich style uh, bottom to the cabinet, if that makes sense. We also have the nice, really nice soft clothes in the cab above cabinet. So I think I mentioned that already. Shut that one, shut that one. And then we'll go to the, um, dinette so on the dinette one side of it is going to be your aldi system so if we open this one we're going to actually see into the bowels of the let me get this right so we'll go into the bowels of the aldi system um, now that's going to be a low point drain right there for the hot water and there should be one somewhere for the cold as well so that's going to drain right out into um, the ground, I think, is where that's at. So you can see basically how they're doing the plumbing. It X-Plex there. And then you've got part of your Aldi system for creating the heat in there. But this is going to be part of the winterization system. When you need to winterize it, you'll go to this place right here. And then this is going to cover that up so that you don't have to see that when you don't need to access the Aldi system. The power system is going to be hidden behind this door. So you've got your breakers and fuses all in there, right there. And that's also going to have that new, um, what would that be called? Option, where if you have a fuse that goes out, it will light that with a red LED to let you know that the, refu the fuse is no longer working. Now, there's not any storage under the dinettes because we've got those systems under the dinette on the 33 foot. As far as the, oh, get my camera. So the dinette itself is powered. 
show you that going down in real time, which is really nice to not have to, you know, deal with physically maneuvering a table when you want to put the die net down. That is a very well built mechanism that I can tell, you know, it just, it looks nice. Um, there it's all the way down. That's right there, all the way down. Now let me set the camera up so we can see this. There we go. Now you guys love it when I lay down on stuff to give you a visual. So I'm right at 510, 511-ish. Is there another... Is there a pillow that goes in there? Because that don't fit. Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. So these are stored. They were in the they were in the wardrobe, and I wasn't sure what they were for. Now I know, because those are definitely not big enough to fit in there. Now remember, I am 5'10ish, probably 5'11 with shoes on. So let's see how much room. So I am touching both sides. Right, my head's touching there. But if you needed to put a decent sized adult here, you definitely could. And there's plenty of room for two kids to sleep here. If you had two grandkids, you could definitely sleep two grandkids here, no problem. And then, and it's actually, I mean, it's fairly comfortable for. For a dinette, I want to say it's one of the more comfortable dinettes that I've laid down on in my long career selling RVs. And then putting this back, so you didn't actually have to take take these off, but I would assume you would probably want to do that um, to give you a little bit more room. But if you had you know younger grandkids that don't need you know, necessarily need more room than what's right here. You could leave these on at night, let them sleep in this area, and then in the morning, you're just pulling these up, these pieces, storing these somewhere, which we ha currently have them in the closet. And we now just press the button over here. I can see it is rubbing a little bit right there. I don't know if that's, yeah, I mean, these don't come up, so. That's in place. <laughs> kind of a funny noise it was making. It's very quiet. doesn't make a lot of noise when you're running it up and down. And like you wouldn't want this switch to be close to the dinette because you're not going to run, as you can probably imagine, you're not going to run the dinette up and down. And one thing I like about this, if you had, um, say you had younger kids that were going to sit here and color or do homework or do something, you could lower this down to make it a little bit more comfortable for them because of the way the mechanism work, works. You can stop the, the table any, anywhere you want to. But there's plenty of room here for actually sitting down at the table. I <laughs> think lots of room for four people to sit here. No problem. Uh, I think four adults could easily sit here. And then, of course, this is going to be a really nice Corian countertop. And it's Corian on top of plywood. There's a light Italian plywood in there, uh, probably to help a little bit with the weight. But it is a really nice countertop. Matches the countertop there. And, of course, this is the classic. So you're going to see this hard surface style countertop everywhere. But you're also in the largest classic, the largest travel trailer, and the heaviest travel trailer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the camera switched around, and we're going to kind of take a look at the entertainment for the classic. Okay. So the, as far as the entertainment goes, you do have this really nice recliner style sofa. Uh, now it isn't like the, you know, this is, this is comfortable is what I would call it. This is not going to be, you know, some of the you know, travel trailers that we sell here will have like almost residential, uh, theater seats in it. That's not what this is. Uh, this is very Airstream to me, meaning just the way that it's set up. 
The, re the back of this doesn't recline at all that I can tell. Um, I don't think there's anywhere for it to really go for it to recline. Um, but you do have independent control of each side for your um, recliner chair. And like this right here, just having my feet up a little bit is actually quite comfortable. But I mean, it's way more comfortable than some of the other Airstreams out there. You know, if you're just going to compare Airstream to Airstream, this is really comfortable, you know, compared to say like the 25 foot flying cloud when you're just sitting um, on the chair there. But quite comfortable, I think. Really nice leather. Uh, the subwoofer is right down here for the radio, but then you also have the Bose soundbar that's connected to the TV right there. Now, a few remotes that you're going to have. Um, this one is actually on a little holder that's not mounted anywhere. So I don't, you don't need this part to be connected to this, to the remote. You can actually just do the remote if you want to, but that's how it comes from the factory. So this is going to be the remote for the projector. This is the remote for the Bose. This is actually the remote for the TV in the bedroom, which is a 12 volt smart TV. I did discover that this is a 12 volt projector, which I quite like. Um, so nice area. I'm going to pull the camera over here so you can see the projector come down the over the air channels that you're used to getting with like, you know, the regular TV that's in your, um, the bedroom. It's also, if I remember correctly, a, I was wondering if that was going to hit. It's also somewhat of a smart TV or smart projector as well. Let me stick these back in the closet. Those in there, all right. Okay, so that's on, and then this is your remote for the projector. And I don't think you actually have to point it to it um, to get that to turn on. And then let's go to cinema mode. All right, let me turn the volume off so I don't get in trouble. Oh. Wait a minute, Mom. Okay, so I want the volume to be off so I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube for, for uh, having audio on that I don't own. But it is Bose, it's connected straight to it. That came right on. Um, you're basically gonna control the Bose soundbar with this. This will be the volume for it. There's also uh, volume that's on the projector itself. So you can have that on and that's gonna be behind you because it's over top of you. Uh, if you wanna turn that off, you would turn that off. Now, like I said, this is um, over the air television that we're just getting in our area if you go back to uh let's see that button yeah so that's over the air you also have an hdmi input that would go to this and it's going to be right up here in the storage area um, which i'll show you in a second and then we should be able to go uh, how's that work well now my remote's not working update the magic remote software okay it, oh it's updated i didn't know that that was going to happen <laughs> um let's see okay now it's working so i had to update the remote but it did that automatically so that's kind of cool i didn't have to think about that at all so this is the home screen here um you're going to have the ability to put some apps in here things like netflix prime i'm going to expect you're also going to be able to add other software as well to this which I really like the fact that the projector that, um, oh, look at that. You can point the remote at the TV um, and control it that way. That's sick. Okay, sorry. I might have in a moment. Okay, so look at that. All right, LG content. How do you do this? Okay, files, music, photos. You can surf the web, I guess, on this if you've got internet. And then... Um, probably your different options, but there is Netflix on this. There's a whole button just for Netflix and prime. So there is a lot of things I think you are able to do with this. I really like that side of it. My thought will be with a projector, um, you know, how, how, you know, convenient is this going to be now? It's a massive screen from the standpoint of what we're sitting in. You know, we're sitting in an eight, eight foot, five and a half inch wide camper. Uh, it's 33 foot long, but it's huge. Like in that sense, it's massive. 
But like it's daytime out right now, and the, it's not the best, you know, viewing experience. But also, when you're camping, um, do you need a TV? So one touch to get it to go up, one touch to go down. I like that about it. Uh, the projector is right here. You may have to adjust the focus on this when you get it. There's also a zoom in and out that you control within the um, within the software itself. But it was very easy to figure out. I thought I think it's fairly intuitive. Um, I feel like most people are going to like it. So let's move over and just take a look at everything the desk has to offer. Okay. So as I even start to mess with the desk, I know one of the questions I'm going to get is, Chad, why didn't you set at the desk so we could see what that looked like? There's a leftover screw from the factory. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it's a small chair. This is a small chair, but it's not uncomfortable. I think... For most of us, you know, most of, of the buyer that's going to buy this, you just want a spot that you can maybe do a little bit of work. You do have a really nice pop-up power plug here with USB charging. Um, I like it. I mean, it's comfortable. You're not going to set up a whole display here per se, but be great for a laptop. It's a comfortable level. The chair sits at a comfortable height. Now, as far as storage, let's look at that. We're going to have a nice pull out here. There's not anything. I mean, this is going to come off. So let's see. Does that come off? I feel like it's got to come off. How do I get it off? Here we go. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, that's an important part to know about. So this right here is part of your um, tire pressure system. So this is a button you're going to want to get to right there for whenever you're setting your tire pressures. And then we're just going to, Obviously, see some wiring in here. That's going to be a spot just for various parts, components, and stuff. But that's where that is. Hopefully, it's clearly stated in the user manual where that's going to be. But that's for your tire pressure monitor system. And you'll actually do something with that button that's lighting up on top when you're trying to set your tire pressure. So that's what's there. And I'm assuming we're going to see the same thing right there. Let's see what's in this one. So somewhat of a nice pullout, almost file cabinet style store, uh, storage, but not a file cabinet. There's not anywhere to hang files there. And I see anything in there that would be cool to see? No. So that is your kind of desk area. Of course, I'll put that back here in a second. And then there is some lights over top for your reading lights here. You can move those around if you so desire. That wire right there is actually the power wire for the um, screen and it probably needs a little bit of tape or a zip tie or something to get that to stay up now one thing i haven't mentioned yet is the roman shades on the classic um, i love these they are super easy to use there's a kind of heavy piece, piece here that's going to be the bottom you just kind of fold that up and then it pulls right down and then when you want to put it away you're just going to grab that same piece there and just lift it straight up and you're done i mean how easy is that let me just show you again just pull it down right there and when, I want, when you want to put it away just lift up and it's away and it's not powered no it's not powered and i know for a lot of you at this price point you're thinking it should be powered but come on powered stuff breaks that's not going to break i like it it works really well and as far as windows are open in this area this window right here will open the smaller window is going to open on the other side, we've got these two small windows here that will open, as well as the big window over the .NET area that will open, so you can get a lot of outside air coming into the system. Now, to, to complete the entertainment slash um, desk area, let's look on the other side. So we're going to have a Fusion radio. What I do like about this radio, it has a Wi-Fi. I'm not sure what that does. I haven't been able to um, get into the turn that off get into the um actual programming of like what that does but the it is series xm ready which is nice so i'm assuming we'd have to add an antenna but that would be fairly easy to do relatively where this is located but you've got um, a couple of different options it is bluetooth that's nice you got the sirius there we've got the aux input we also have a usb input that's right here for the radio and of course, Bluetooth, and then um, you can bring the TV over to this as well. And again, I mentioned 
earlier, there's a subwoofer underneath this seat here. Our speakers are going to be right there and right there, which I like those locations versus right over top of the bed and right over top of the dinette. Now up here is going to be a little cover that goes on that. You're also going to have a USB input right here and a uh, Cat 6 input. This is, this is um, on the 33 foot, one thing I'm not a super fan of. I would prefer to see this up here, right there, and then facing this way, than right off the front. Because if you're going to say use Starlink for the Cat 6 data input, and I'll show you where that's at on the outside here in a little bit, that cable is coming out and then going up here to set, you know, plug into Starlink or something up here. Or even better, if this actually was right here, that's where it should be, um, as opposed to right here. Put it right here, and then you could designate this to be your Starlink, your uh, satellite, your antenna stuff, your you know, all that, all of that kind of stuff can be right here, as opposed to right there. That would just be my thought, um, my opinion on that. But uh, it's still usable, and that's actually. A fairly easy retrofit we could do here if you decided to, if you got a classic from me i could get one of our technicians to move that for you if that was something you wanted to do we do have the wine guard switch right here so this is going to turn that hd antenna on and off for your tv stations uh, again soft close and then we'll have some storage right there of course your pack that comes with every new airstream and there is a there an inverted circuit right there that runs off of that new 2000 watt inverter that you get on every new airstream that same plug or the plug underneath the dinette is also going to be part of that inverted circuit. So let's pop over. I think that's going to be basically everything as far as the entertainment slash office area, desk area is going to be concerned. So what I want to do is pop over and let's take a look at the smart system. Now with your season or as Airstream likes to call it, the smart control technology on the classic uh, you're going to see the same thing on the Potter Barn. It is nice. I like it. Um, it is, it's more electronics, and there's a whole area just dedicated to this device, and I'll show you that here in a second. It's one of those things that you probably don't need to mess with, uh, let a you know, trained Airstream technician mess with it, but you are going to be able to see you know, your fresh water, your gray water, your waste water all in one section. You also see power information there. You can um, turn the inverters on and off. You can't, so that's inverter there, tank, uh, your tank heater. So this does have tank heaters on it, which is a upgrade compared to your um, really other Airstreams. Most of them don't have heat, uh, tank heaters. So you do have tank heaters. That's one of the things that makes the Classic more of a full-time capable camper because you have those tank heaters. And you should be able to see battery um, info there. It comes off of a um, Victron Servo. Um, which is really cool that that's there. I wish they gave you, you know, actually a separate um, panel just for the uh, Victron Servo. Maybe they'll do that in the future. And then you do see some volts and amps as far as solar and what solar is doing. So you can see what your solar is doing. To bring it in 13, what, 13 volts, 1.7 amps. So we are sending a little bit of charge to the battery. And then your propane tanks also have a really cool sensor in them to tell you what those levels are. Now, with your, when your propane tanks get to completely zero, it is going to throw an alert up that you have to acknowledge, and it makes a beeping sound. So it will let you know when one of your propane tanks is low. I like that about it. And plus, there is an app that connects to this, so you're able to see all of this information, sorry, all this information on your app as well. Now, when we swipe, excuse me, left, we're going to see our exterior lights. We can turn those on and off right here. Tap them like that. Now we've got the entry door light on. And, of course, the awning light is going to be right there. On the inside, you have a cool little floor plan, which is just so cool that that's on here. But you have a little floor plan. Uh, it shows you where all of your lights are that are controlled by the smart system. So you've got your bedroom lights. We've got our lights in the bathroom area. I'm going to go ahead and turn these on because the bathroom is next. Make sure you stay around for the bathroom. Um, so you can turn all those on and off by just tapping, as you saw there. Now, if it's a dimmable light, so like this one here in the middle is dimmable, you hit and hold that little button, and now we can bring it down in percentages all the way up or all the way down, which would you know just be off. Turn that back on because we need light up in here. And then you're going to move into your climate control, so you can set both your front AC and your rear AC here. As far as modes, you're going to be able to go through um, 
your heat, heat pump, not heat, but heat pump. And then of course your air conditioner and then you turn your fans on and off, things like that. So you're gonna set the temperatures there. Now the reason heat does not show up in here is because you've got the Aldi system that's right here. This is gonna be your water heater and your heat, okay? Um, that'll all be controlled right there. And we swipe over one more time, we're gonna get our fan control. So we've got a front fan, we've got the bathroom fan, and then we've got the rear fan, which, where is that? So that would be, I guess, the rear fan, maybe? Is there a fan? Yeah, okay, so that's gonna be your front fan there. And that is a, is it Dometic? Looks like Dometic. And then there's another one right here that doesn't have any pullover. So you can't cover that one up or close that one off. So we can, we can open those. Uh, we can turn the fans on and off right there. Same thing on both sides. And then of course there's the bathroom fan that just turns on and off. Now at the top here, you're gonna have onboard, cinema, sleep, and away. All of these are, are pre-programmed presets, which also correlate with what you saw on that um, control panel just beside the door. So when you're on board, you just tap and hold that until it activates. That's gonna turn all your lights off. The cinema turns some lights off and then dims some lights. Sleep mode obviously is gonna turn everything off to allow you to sleep. There's also a button in the bedroom for that. Now there's the little hamburger here. You tap that and it's gonna give you even more things to see. So we've got more controls. We can basically control all kinds of things right here. You also have moder monitoring, hard one to say. But we've got solar, should be giving you a battery readout. I'm not sure why it's not giving you a battery readout on this one. Uh, oh. oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that. So you can swipe, you learn something new every day. Swipe from the left, brings up the menu. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna have all your waters, your tanks, and then you're also gonna see, uh, I thought tires showed up here, I guess not. Tires actually are their own. So now you're gonna see tires, including your spare tire there at the front, which is currently a little low, and there's an alert for that. Now you can change these presets. There's a little bit of a process to do that, so make sure you read your user manual on how to do that. Um, but you can update those parameters if you wanna change your PSI for your alert. Uh, of course, your awning's there and it's locked out, so you're going to hit both of those to bring that up. Of course, the climate again, which is the same as the um, favorite screen. And then, see, so awning monitoring, you got that. So alarms are going to be here. So these are the alarms that we're currently getting, which is low LP level and very low LP level. Now, these have already silenced. So when they weren't silenced, this acknowledge right here is in blue. So you would tap that, you're basically acknowledging that you know it is low. And until you fix that, those are gonna stay there uh, and show that alert. Same thing as your spare tire pressure being low, because I think these come from the factory set pretty high. You're gonna probably wanna reset that. There's a little funnel here. That is where your alerts show up. You can tap those there. And again, as I learned this time, you can swipe and then go back to your favorites. For the most part, it's probably gonna stay on this screen here, your favorites here and then you just swipe to whatever area you wanna be at. Again, you can control the smart system with a cell phone or an iPad, and you're able to connect to this through the air connected system as well. And that's up front. So let me walk up there real quick and I'll show you that as well. All right, we're up front. This is in the front. I don't know, I'm teasing you, but we'll look at the bed here in a second, but it's the front storage area. We've got this air connected system here. It is, it's built by Peplink. Um, they build it specifically for Airstream. Uh, you're actually gonna see a cable in here. It's a little network cable. So if you're one of those guys that's looking to um, replace this with a larger PepLink system, you're going to want to know where that cable goes. And I can tell you that. It goes to the back of the smart touch panel. That's where it goes. Um, that is how the smart touch panel is getting connected to this air connected system, which is allowing you to be able to connect to your smart system. Now I've had a few customers who have had um, a T-Mobile card already in it from the factory that allows them to control their smart system, that's it, um, from anywhere for one year. That's what we're hearing. I don't know if that is gonna stay. I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know. They haven't communicated anything to us about that. There's a little QR code right there that you scan when you're connecting to this with the air connected app. Now this right here is gonna be a switch. 
that turns the air connected and smart system on and off. So there's a different disconnect for this system and the smart system, and that is this keyed switch right here. When you turn the battery disconnect off, this does not turn off. It doesn't turn off until you turn this switch off. Now something to know, um, you can turn this key, think about how to say this. Okay, so the key is actually, uh, so it's on and off would be like, like that. Well, it's not really labeled very well. So it's basically just up and down, okay? So you'll have to kind of figure out, I think that's off, I think that's on, yep. So you want to be careful not to turn this key too far. It will actually rotate inside of this bracket here and then rip the two little cables that are connected to the back of this right off of it. And then we've got to take this apart and plug those cables back in. So just something to be careful about there as you're turning this, it's, not going to, it's only going to turn so far. It turns about that far for off and then right there for on. So it's not, it's not going to really rotate there. Just something to know. But this is going to connect to an antenna on the top. It comes standard on the Classic. If you add your own um, SIM card in there, you're going to want to get a data-only SIM card. So data-only. When you tell Verizon or you know, T-Mobile or you know, whoever that you need a card, don't say, hey, I need a card for my Airstream. What you're going to say is I need a, a data-only card, and then don't tell them what it's for. Because they'll really get confused and they'll tell you you need to go talk to Airstream, but that is not the case. So that's where that is right there. So now you are in the largest and nicest bathroom Airstream has probably ever made. And then, you know, it's hard to really give good video shots of, well, small spaces like Airstreams. But you have this just gorgeous backlit uh, shower here. We've got a heated towel rack right there when the Aldi system is on, as well as a heated floor. We're going to have some storage up here, which is, you know, not huge, but there is storage there. And then it is a, um, what do they call these? Uh, macerator toilet, I think is what they call it. So there's some buttons right here for that toilet there. But a really nice porcelain commode we have here. Really nice sitting area. There's also another little storage area right there behind the, um, the commode area. And we've got this really nice shelf here and your heater is gonna be back in this area here as well as right there. So all these cutouts are gonna be part of that Aldi system, which I need to talk more about here in a second. And we're gonna have this really nice, I mean, what, what to call that, but just beautiful sink that's raised up from the countertop there. And we've got a really nice residential faucet there. We're also gonna have, hey guys, Chad here, this really nice mirror with just gorgeous LED lights strips going down on both sides. And of course that's gonna open into a medicine cabinet that which is currently missing its shelves, but there should be some shelves in there. And beside that, we're gonna have this kind of cute, smaller little area for storing your linens and things like that, but I love it. Now this right here needs to be on every single door that opens. Yes, I'm talking to you Airstream, that door in the kitchen. So we've got this, again, really nice Airstream branded button controller. So we're gonna be able to turn our bathroom lights and fans on, our shower light, the vanity light, which is gonna be that one. And of course, it comes down in a nice dim and it comes on in a nice dimming fashion. And then the water pump switches right there as well. Now you can turn the water pump on within the smart app, but you also turn it on with that physical switch there. Now the wardrobe also has its own cute little button right there. And you have a tremendous wardrobe cedar lined wardrobe here let me pull this out right there and then let's go to the other side which and of course i've got more stuff in here so put that there and then these are actually your zipty chairs that come with the classic we do have some linens in here that are going to come with the classic and there's um oh there's the there's the uh, shelves for the wardrobe i mean for the medicine cabinet they're right there but you have this really nice cedar lined closet. It's just absolutely beautiful and it's massive. And you have all of these mirrors in here, mirrors everywhere, makes this space look full wardrobe mirror right there. That just, this bathroom is just next level. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in there. Of course you have your hanging closet there. It's, it's does have lights in here and there's just a switch, very satisfying switch right there. Now below this, we're gonna have 
some pull-out storage right there. So great storage there. Um, we also have access to the back side of the shower through these access panels. So we can see into this area. That's the, uh, I think that's the um, Aldi um, glycol level right there. The main yard getting the, I'm gonna try to do this on one hand, the most in-depth video ever. There we go. I was able to do that one hand. And then also there's another access right there. Those are just access panels for uh, different systems in the camper. Now under the sink, we're gonna have even more, I mean, that's deep, super deep. Storage there, right there, and then right there. Fantastic, I mean, that's just phenomenal. Now let me sit on the commode. It's almost, you know, almost laughable to even sit here, but there's a enormous amount of room to be able to use the bathroom in here. Again, this space is as large as like some Airstream campers. Like this is a 16 foot Bambi and just in the bathroom area. So lots of space. We do have a power plug there. The toilet paper holder is in the prime location to be able to get to the toilet paper. And again, you have the really nice Corian countertop right here uh, for any things that you want to have. And you can see yourself while you're on the commode. That's a little bit awkward. Now, as far as the shower goes, again, this is gonna be the largest, largest shower that you can get in an Airstream. It reminds me a little bit of the um, Atlas as far as the lights go. So let me step in here. So this is 100% the only, you hear me hear it first here, the only two person shower of any Airstream travel trailer currently on the market. You could easily fit two people here. I mean, just, I'm standing here. You know, there's that much space. And I'm not even touching the wall behind me. So from here to here, you are able to touch. I mean, you, two per, maybe three per, two per, we'll stick with two. Two, two person shower. Um, fantastic shower. You can bring this up and down. Um, of course, you have the ability to turn it on and off. You've got the, your mixing valve right there. Um, and now you also have this little hanger, so I unlock it, unlock it that way. Yep, this is going to come across. So you get this, basically every Airstream is going to have this, comes over and kind of locks in place right there. And then you can lock it here and then it will give you a little bit of tightness. So you can hang a bathing suit here, you know, maybe a towel. I don't know, it feels, I don't know if a towel would be appropriate for that. But, you know, light, lighter things like a bathing suit or something like that, you could put it there. Then you're unloosing this. And then you'll just pick that back up. Let it go right back into its little home. And it's there. So it's a cool little, little knickknack there. We're also going to have these uh, storage soap holders. You know, two layers there, two levels, which is nice. Um, Exposed aluminum in the shower. That's, um, that's also a thing. I'll be, like, honestly, the largest shower you can possibly have in an Airstream, I would say the only two-person shower in an Airstream is going to be the Classic. And then it does have the little travel lock right there that you're going to want to make sure that's snapped in place before you go traveling down the road. Is there anything else? Oh, there's your little uh, port fan right there. Well, that's cool. So you have to physically open that and then close it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's everything about this bathroom. It's incredible. The back window does open. It's also an exit window, but it's a massive back window. There's a pull-down shade here. Kind of the traditional Airstream shade. You can pull it down just to there if you wanted to. You're definitely going to want to pull that down for taking a shower because you can see right outside, um, right outside there. But a uh, super, super cool bathroom for an Airstream. So the last thing I want to show you on the bathroom is going to be this little area here, which is, again, another access. Bring that out. So we have, which just, part of, it's just, it's part of the classic. So we actually have a drawer that will pull out. And you've got some of your different controls. It's actually not enough room on there. There we go. So you're going to have some of your different controls for your smart system that's actually pulled out we're gonna need to fix that um and then we have another one 
right here. So this is kind of the brain for, for the C zone. So all your different 12 volt things are going to come into here. So you actually have two spots for um, 12 volt. So you also have more um, fuses in this area. Uh, this is going to be basically all of your lights, your tank heater, your heater pads, all of the things that the C zone control, they're going to be in this storage area here or in this control for the C zone right there. And then and right there. And that pulls back in. That's really nice that they've got that built out that way. Water pumps right there. If you need to access that, see if there's anything else. Let's see. Oh, that looks like your winterization tube right there. Yep, there's your winterization tube for when you're winterizing. That's cool. And just part of the plumbing there. All right, so that's that's that area there. I like that. I don't like that that pulled out there. We'll need to fix that, but I'd like to see that a little bit different. All right, let's move to the bedroom. Okay, we are moving into the owner suite of the classic 33 foot front bed. We're gonna have some really nice storage on both sides. We've got nightstands on both sides with both power outlets and USB-C type or USB type C and type A. That's gonna be on both sides. Now, one of the things about the classic bedroom is one of the only floor plans that Airstream offers that's gonna give you a door that actually opens and closes the primary suite to the rest of the camper. Let's go down and it's gonna connect here in the middle with um, magnets. So that's your door going into your primary suite for the classic. You can actually close that off a little bit. It is open at the top, so it's not gonna be like a true door in the sense of uh, volume. And then it's a pocket door. That's gonna go right there. That's gonna go right in there. It connects in there to a magnet. And then you're able to move into your primary suite. We've got lots of windows in here, so lots of light to be able to come in. I love that there's two port windows um, in this coach in the bedroom area, and there's also two opposing windows that open. One's a little bit smaller, one's a little bit bigger. And of course, that center window there is gonna open as well. Now you're gonna have your smaller 24 inch TV right there. It is a smart TV. It is 12 volt, so it's got all of the new tech on it, and it's on a swivel arm, so you can pull that out and move it around as you need to. You're also going to have a control for the bed right here, and a control for the bed over there, and I'll demonstrate that here in a second. And then we have this really nice, of course, Airstream branded uh, control panel for your um, all of your different lights and things. So we've got the fan on and off for that fan right there. Then we're also gonna have our ceiling lights, our accent light, our um, onboard and then sleep mode. So you can tap that button right there and it goes to sleep. And then that's gonna control the bed right there. Let me figure out how to get the camera angles so I can show you and demonstrate the bed to you. So I don't necessarily have a great spot for the, um, like set my camera down so you can kind of see the whole bed. I do still want to try to give you an idea of what the bed looks like as far as laying down and utilizing this button here. So one of the things I do like, we have a switch here. There's the switch over there, over there that I showed you a second ago. And then we've got the USB charging right there, type A and type C. And then there is a 110 outlet there, your regular AC. So from a laying down standpoint, you definitely have this nice standpoint of being able to put the mattress up. Now, you can't lay on that. That's not got enough umph for you to be able to lay on it and it pick you up. Like, it's not going to pick me up. Um, but, you know, from a standpoint of bringing that up, you have your pillow, which of course we still have the plastic on everything, but just a really comfortable way to chill out in your Airstream, um, maybe with the TV on, but good room. It is the queen bed. You can see the specs online for exactly how long this is, but it's really nice, uh, well-built, but it isn't a, 
you know, power lift. Now I think I could easily do it going down. So it's letting me go down, but it was, yeah, it would not pick me, it will not pick me up. Maybe if I was smaller, it would pick me up, but I doubt it. So now I'm all the way laid down. So one of the things I do really like, we do have reading lights under here. So right there. And then we also have another control for all of your different lights. Oh, my camera got weird on me. There we go. So we got all of our controls for our lights and the fan. So the same, basically the same um, control that's up at the front of the bedroom we've got here as well. Try to smooth, hold that as smooth as possible, but we can do sleep mode, which is just going to turn all of your lights off that are not controlled by, you know, pressing a button like that one. And then we can also do on board, which is going to wake up basically all of your overhead lights. I do like that the sleep mode, there's still just the sleep mode light is still lit up. So you can find that easy at night. And then when you wake up in the morning, you can hit the on board and it's going to bring everything up and turn all of your overhead lights back on. That's really cool. I like that. Um, now, as far as storage in the bedroom area, we're going to have the storage up above. Of course, it has the light with the little plunger there. We've also got this storage there. So we have two really nice lockers up here. Again, with the soft close hardwood door fronts right there. And then on each side, we're going to have a really nice pullout. I guess we're hiding some things in here. It's a really nice pullout there. And we also have more storage below and another pullout right here to each side. So his and her pullouts pull the bed back up. Because when the bed's all the way down, something to know. It does really, so the bed, that's all the way down. So there's not a ton of room to walk around the bed when the bed is all the way down. So that's something, you know, I didn't talk about that in my last video. Definitely something to think about um, when you're getting the queen bed versus the twin bed. Now the twin bed, you have the same feature as far as being able to lift up the bed, but you're going to have two separate um, controls for that because it's two separate beds. Um, and you're going to have a lot more room here because you got that aisle in the middle. I have a really good video that is a twin versus queen. I'll, I'll link that above, click on that, but you'll have a nice aisle there, but you have two separate beds and each bed has its own motor to be able to do that. Now coming to the other side, we're going to have another pull out, another same storage there and a, another drawer that pulls out right here. That's going to go under the bed. So that's all framed out solid plywood. And then up front, we have another large drawer that pulls out. And then on top of that, we can lift up the bed frame. It is on shocks. And we've got all of this storage underneath. So that's your, there's two drawers that pull out. You have this storage in the middle as well that you can utilize. There's a little bit of storage right there and a little bit of storage right there. And of course we've got lights that will light up at night right there. And there's one around the other corner. All right, boom. And then this is a slatted, slitted slat, slat, slits, European slats, I think is what it's called, style bed. And so this is a nicer bed than what you're gonna see on a lot of your you know, flying cloud, international floor plans. Um, so that's the bed there. That's the queen bed on the massive 33 foot classic. I was going to say flying cloud. They do not, do not make a 33 foot flying cloud. And of course you got the pocket doors there. So let's jump to the outside. I'm going to get the boxes back in here so I can get out the door and then we'll do a quick walk around of the outside. That is because I totally forgot to start the outside walk of the 2024 classics so i'm going to kind of do that now and then we'll jump into kind of where i started thinking that i'd already recorded uh, this part of it so jumping into the outside i did want to mention that if you are in search of an airstream make sure you do give me a call because i am going to give you the best pricing that you can possibly get on the classic or any airstream that is out there currently in the market 
So make sure you give me a call. My contact information is right there down there in the description. Now, as we look at this on the outside, again, it's the longest Airstream that they make. You're gonna have the longest awning. Um, it's also gonna be a taller front cap there. Now, part of that is a new cap that came out for the classic, I wanna say 2021, somewhere around that time frame. They updated the front cap and the rear cap on the classic. That cap is now on the Globetrotter, the Pottery Barn, the International, uh, the Trade Wind, the Flying Cloud. All of those have this new front cap. Now, Airstream has told me that the front here is going to have some new structure in it to help support that part of the camper connecting to the frame. It's also going to be a little bit taller and it's going to be kind of seamless or more seamless up there than it has been in the past. And stay tuned at the end of the video, I will show you the roof and I'll point that out to you so you can see that. So we're gonna move a little bit closer now, start looking at the tires underneath and the front end of the Airstream Classic 33 foot. Okay, so that spare tire is gonna be right there. You're also gonna be able to see one of your power stabilizers. Uh, now you do have a full aluminum wrap on the Airstream. So underneath there, we're going to aluminum all the way around and the roof is gonna be aluminum as well. Now right there is what you're gonna use to drop that spare tire down. We're also gonna have a, a extra solar input. Now that's gonna go straight to the battery. So to use that, you wanna have a suitcase style solar panel that has a charge controller built on. Now inside of this box, we're gonna have two 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries. We're gonna have one of our two main outside storage areas right here. Good size storage area, some space is taken up right there, but you do have a good storage area on the outside. For a 30 foot, I would actually think we would have more storage, but we don't. Now under this cover here, we're gonna have our two 30 pound propane tanks. These are really nice stainless steel tanks is what I think they are. I think they're stainless steel. Um, and then you do have the gauge right there. So this is gonna communicate back to the smart system. That's how we see it on the smart system. And you also be able to see it on your phone. And then it's there, there's also an analog uh, gauge here too. So you can just look straight down and see what the level is for each tank. Love that feature. Would love to have that on my Flying Cloud. Now we're gonna have our 30, 3,500 pound ton jack here. It is powered, fantastic. We also have a little light right there. Under this cap is gonna be a bolt that'll allow you to raise this up and down manually in the vent that the motor goes bad. We're gonna have the Demco easy connection system here love that i've got it on mine and coming around we've got our quick disconnect propane tank connector right there and that's just your seven pin hanging out there um now backing up the center window this solar guards here these are just here to protect the actual glass windows behind it it's going to be a polymer so it is very strong but it's not glass that's also very easy to replace. So it's almost like a sacrificial in the sense that they're easier to replace if you get a crack or something happens to them. That is the same for the rock guards here. Now that part there is gonna be stainless steel, what's, what's covered in white right now. That's another thing that's protecting this aluminum behind it. Now that's an Alcoa aluminum. It has a clear coat on it. So it is protected. It's not, you know, aluminum straight out to the elements. It is protected. Now you're gonna still want to coat this with a wax or use a ceramic coating or some type of protection to protect that clear coat and keep it nice and shiny and healthy over the lifetime of the coach. So that's something you are gonna wanna do. Now the stainless steel rock guard, if you get dents on that and you're gonna probably get some dents unless you have something up here to protect the front of the Airstream from any rocks that might come up from the truck, that's easy to replace. We can replace that. A lot of times our store actually has that stuff in stock. Now, as we move around, you're gonna find probably one of the longest, well, the longest awning, Zipti awning in the Airstream lineup. So Airstream generally is gonna give you a end cap to end cap awning. So this is a 33 foot camper. You're gonna have a massive awning that goes out and you'll have all of that space there to entertain and hang out with folks when you are at the campsite. Uh, now coming to uh, into the camper, we've got our aluminum steps here, now, like that. Now if this right here happens, it will happen sometimes. You're just going to bring it back, let it lock back in place on both sides, like that. So what you want is for this to fold down like that. If I come up, like I can come up and let it drop, but just kind of let it come down like that, and then bring it down. And now we've got our two steps. Now to put it away, we're going to reverse that. Bring it right up, 
let it sit right in place like that. Now to put this away, I'm going to pull it towards me. Then I'm going to push forward and then up. All right, so let's take a look. Bring it towards me. And then one fluid motion, I'm going to go back. Right there with one hand, even my left hand, okay? And then to release it, just like that. I want to make sure that both sides lock. There's a spring back here and here that pulls this down. And that allows this to lock in place. If this isn't working, it could be dirty in there. Or it could be a spring that's gone bad. So again, to put this away, we're going to pull it towards us. One fluid motion forward and then up. Just like that. And then again to pull it out. Just like that. Now you can do just one step like this. If you're in, like in this case, it's fairly low. So I wouldn't be too concerned about probably putting the second step out. Uh, I might just because um, it'd be easier for my pup um, or Rosie or Foxwood Lab to get up into the camper with the two steps. But if you're in a lower spot and you don't need that second step, you don't have to use it. It's optional. Now, right beside that, we're going to have the outlet for the Aldi system. Now, the Aldi system is a, a radiant heat. It's, it uses, excuse me, a glycol mixture. It's going to go all the way around, basically all the way around the outer perimeter inside the coach. Once that liquid is to temp, it will pretty much keep your camper warm. Uh, now, it takes a little bit of time for that glycol to get to heat or to get to temp. But once it gets there, it's going to be a very even and consistent heat. Now, right beside that is going to be your 110 outlet. Now, this is only going to work when you're plugged into shore power. It does not work off the inverter. Moving back, we're going to have our Michelin tires that come on the Classic. So this is a upgraded tire for the Classic. It is the LT22575 R16. So it's a 16 wheel um, and it's on the Michelin. You also have that, I don't know if I mentioned on the spare tires, also a Michelin. And then we also have right back here, our Dexter axle. So that is a rubber torsion axle. It's the best axle in the industry. Now that kind of bend there in the middle, that's normal. That's how they set the camber to keep the tires straight up and down. So they do that at the factory. You're also gonna have a shock right there that will, or a damper shock that will help to smooth out the ride as you're going down the road. But I promise you, this will be the best tow and travel trailer you've ever towed. Now moving towards the back of the 33 foot classic, we'll have one of our outside storage areas. This is gonna be wet, wet storage. Anything you put in there is gonna get wet, kind of like your bumper. And then we'll move around to the back side of the camper. We're gonna have our standard uh, backup camera right there. We also have the standard window awnings right there. And then all of your lights are going to be your marker lights. All that's going to be LED lights. And then we have one of our other, or really our other outside storage compartment for the 33 is going to be right there. Comes in a little bit on both sides. Not a super deep area uh, compartment, but you do have that storage. And then we have the bumper storage. There, there we go. Now I like to use this for my leveling blocks. I put an extra sewer hose that I don't really use that much in here and then uh, just some extra accessories and things that go along with utilizing the camper. Uh, let's see, that's everything. That window does open as I mentioned on the inside. It's starting to rain a little bit so I am hurrying. <laughs> so we got our stabilizers right there. And then you can see that underbelly. Again, it's a full aluminum wrap. And moving to the business side of the classic we're gonna have our gray and black valve right there. And we've got our smart plug. This is gonna be the Cat 6 inlet that goes up to the entertainment center. And then your coaxial cable that goes to the TV, TVs or TV and projector area. Then we've got our city, city inlet right there, our black tank flush. Remember that does have a pressure regulator built into it already. And your black tank flush is gonna go straight to the black tank and flush that out. And we've got another one of those storage compartments right there. We've got our city fill, our city fill, excuse me, freshwater potable fill. Now, one of the things you get with the classic is these really nice uh, stainless steel doors on all of your outside compartments, except for that power plug on the other side. Uh, so, fat, you got your freshwater there, that's gravity fed. This is gonna be the buttons for the power stabilizers. So that's the front. We set the camera down so we can see that working. 
Oh, wrong way. Right there. So that's going down. That is a benefit of the classic to have the power stabilizers. So you're just going to have a button for the front and then a button for the back. And I'll run those back up. We always like to keep stabilizers up and away when we're storing uh, units on the lot for sale. And then we'll have the, hold on, let me grab the key. All right. Then we've got our outside shower. Now it is a unique key on the classic. Pretty much everybody, everything else is gonna be a, what's that, 751 key. So it's a different faucet out here for the classic. Really nice faucet too. Um, that is right there and there's a little spot for you to put your or to hold that now one thing I do like I generally like to see the outside shower close to the sewer outlet that's preferred for me but it's not a necessity you don't have to do that uh, it doesn't have to be that way let me lock this back like what are you doing Chad uh, okay there we go and lock that one back there we go, so those are nice and locked now. I do really like this look versus the plastic that we get on pretty much everything else. And then below, we're gonna have the really nice smart plug. It's also the upgraded smart plug, so it's a cast aluminum, probably, or metal, some kind of cast metal. You've got the lights on top. Now, this will tell you if it's not uh, correct power. If it's basically reverse polarity, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not gonna be any protection easily pulls out easily goes in fantastic love it want one on mine <clears throat> you have two more of those outside storage areas right there and that is pretty much the outside of the classic let me grab a ladder so we can take a look at the top and then we'll pretty much be done with the video okay we are on at the top of the classic now that white fin there that's going to be the air connected system and you're gonna see your some of your solar panels there and your uh, face accident fan or Dometic fan whichever one it is we also have the two Coleman ACs right there now the little satellite looking thing that's just gonna be your HD antenna now let me move over a little bit see if I can get a better angle of the top there and okay so now we're kind of in the middle you can see the combiner box there for the solar and there's lots of room up here if you wanted to add solar you know 33 foot it's kind of assumed but there is plenty of room to add solar the only thing i think would be a negative for this would be where would you put additional batteries maybe hang them underneath the way that we do they're doing the, tra the trade wind but there's the top of the classic one last thing i want to mention on the roof is this section right here so you can see this sill that goes across that's connecting that, that roof aluminum to the front cap here. Now that white is gonna be a baked on enamel coating. It's to help with solar energy. Uh, it will it does really reduce the energy coming from the sun and hitting that metal there. Also protects that metal that's in direct sunlight. Now on the older shells, there was a raise here to account for the ducted AC. They updated this front shell, I think 2021 or 2022 on the classic. And then 2024, they updated it on the International and the Flying Cloud. So this is the front cap here that's gonna have more structure in the front from what we are being told by uh, the factory there, Airstream, uh, to handle the front end of the camper. And we can also see uh, up close of the Zipti awning there. There's a little motor right there. There's also a winding motor that's in this arm here that helps to push that out. All right, folks, that concludes the walk around of the incredible 2024 classic 33 front bed. Now I do want to mention if you got to this point in the video, first of all, thank you. But second, if you are in the market for a classic or any Airstream, make sure you give me a call because I can give you the best pricing on any Airstream on the market currently right now. So to get the best deal, make sure you give me a call. Also the best customer service. I will give you that for sure. I guarantee it. Now, I hope you guys are having a great day. My contact information is down there in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I hope you guys live riveted, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.